you start doing this, you will never hate your pixie haircut again. Wait a minute, Justin, I don't hate my pixie haircut. I love my pixie haircut. Well, guess what? If you already love it, if you do this, you're gonna love it even more. Okay, I've been doing hair for a long, since 1995, so I'm old, okay? But regardless, for a long time. And what I have learned in that time is that when you take your hair short, there are certain things that you can do that I honestly don't see a lot of people doing that change everything. In fact, there are four very specific things that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video. And I promise you, if you follow these kind of guidelines, you will love your pixie or just kind of your short hair in general actually. Okay, before we dive in, I wanna say a huge thank you to Nira. They're the sponsor of this video and I'm actually very excited to share about them today. So uh, stick around because I promise you might not have ever seen this before and I'm a fan. Okay, getting into the four little things that I think you need to know here. Uh, let's talk about number one and that is the M. Yeah, <laughs> what is the M? The M is the M neckline. Now this, I almost never see people do, but it makes such a massive difference. When you're taking your hair really short, if you cut the neckline in the back very bold or blunt straight across, it's gonna make your neck actually look wider. Now on the side of that, if we actually follow your natural neckline and if you look at your natural neckline, almost everybody has this kind of little bit of a kind of M shape, some are more pronounced than others. But when you're going short, if you kind of follow that little bit of M on your neckline, what you'll find is not only does it help elongate your neck, but from the profile, it actually will help to draw the eye up the shape and lift the eye. And this is very important. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you're probably aware of exactly how important it is. <laughs> but nonetheless, do that M hairline and I promise you things will change. Okay, number two is leave the top layers long enough. <laughs> now, this is something that I used to see in the salon all the time. I, is actually probably the biggest issue when it comes to short hair. It's very easy to think you want more volume on the top and therefore it makes sense as my hair grows out, it starts to get a little bit heavier. If I take those top layers a little bit shorter, then I'll get more volume. It's not really how it works though. You need those top layers to have enough length to actually create bend that is the true creator of volume. And if you don't have those have enough length, especially in comparison to the sides, what you'll find is you'll get this little indent on the temple area and then it just makes it look like you have a little cap of volume on top and then the sides look really full and it changes the entire shape of your overall haircut. Now here's the important thing to understand. Volume is not just simply having big hair. True volume is actually when you have volume in the right areas, meaning you're trying to create volume in the areas that help bring the eye to certain parts of your face shape to accentuate what you want to accentuate or not accentuate what you don't want to accentuate. Many times on shorter hair, that means having volume around the kind of temple area or just above the temple area really kind of following the lines of the cheekbone structure. And that helps to lift the eye and it really helps to bring the eye's attention up, which lifts the face up, which helps everything to look more youthful. So having it indent right there because the top layer is a little bit too short, takes away the ability to have the volume there and therefore kind of works everything against us, makes the sides look very wide and kind of brings the eye down the shape and draws the face down with it. If you feel like your top isn't getting enough volume, pay more attention to the sides because that could be why you're feeling like the top feels flat. Okay, before we move on to the next thing that you need to start doing immediately so that you never hate your picks again, I wanna tell you about something that I found out. Well, actually, my wife taught me about or showed me that I think is really cool and I think you're gonna love it. You might not know about it, so come here, actually. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, hi. I'm just using my Nira Pro laser in the middle of your YouTube video. This is not planned at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, truth, we try so hard to make these <laughs> integrations seem seamless. They never are. However, what is seamless about this is this is the Nira laser. Why did you start using it? For wrinkles and elasticity. Same. So this is really good to remove those wrinkles. I get really bad wrinkles around my eyes and my forehead. I've always had wrinkles around my forehead though, but I've been using this all over my face. You can use it on your face, you can use it on your neck, you can use it on the tops of your hands, which is all the places that as we um, get more advanced in age. More mature, I like to say more mature. You might be maturing, I'm just getting older. And then also for dark circles, it can help. So this heats up the dermal layer up to just under 46 degrees Celsius and triggers the body to build natural collagen. This process actually helps to maximize the signaling of cell rejuvenation but doesn't actually damage the skin or cause pain. I like to use it on level five. It's wonderful for me. And then you simply just apply 
apply it to your skin. I don't feel any pain. I feel a little bit of warmth and that is it. You change the settings from one up to through five. And then when it feels uncomfortable, you dial it back. And then that's how you kind of gauge what setting you should have it on. Now, the great thing about this particular one is it's so big that she'll do her entire face in like a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. I really like to target my jowls. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so it's super simple to use. To turn it on, you just hit this one button and it turns on for you. And then you've got five different levels. So one through five and to change the levels, you just hit this button right here and it goes up and down through the levels. And then turn it off, you just hold that button right there for three seconds. One, two, three, and it turns off. We're not personally ready for the more invasive options. Never this. say never, but not right now. We're not ready right now. So <laughs> this is definitely where it's at. I would challenge you to take the 90 day near challenge. There's a 90 day money back guarantee. There is a link in the description. So uh, check that out, save yourself 10%. Try the 90 day challenge out, see how it goes for you. I think it's gonna go really well. We're excited. We appreciate Nira for sponsoring this video. We love and it. Uh, yeah, we're big fans of it. We've been using it. That's what we're talking about it. So there's that. The number three thing that you need to know that will allow you to never hate your pixie haircut again is that the sides need to be tapered. Now, oftentimes I will see a situation where you pull those side lengths out and they are straight up and down. But if you look at the face structure, there is not one part of your face that is straight up and down. Your cheekbone structure is angled up and out. Your jawbone structure is angled up and out. The sides of your head more often than not are angled on some levels up and out. Everything kind of has that same overall feel. So when you don't follow that facial structure line, you end up with something that looks very full in the sides. Now, if you've ever had a short haircut, especially like a pixie, and you felt like it grew up really quickly, but you've had it short before and it didn't grow out that fast, what happened? Well, it's likely that it was actually just straight up and on the sides and it wasn't tapered. It's not tapered down towards the ear. It's gonna feel like it gets very full on the sides very fast, and since hair is an optical illusion, as it gets fuller on the sides, that top is going to feel flatter and you're gonna feel like you need more volume on the top. So you're gonna try to get it cut shorter and it's gonna go right back into the concerns that I just talked about in point number two. So having those sides tapered is going to immediately help create that illusion of more volume right where we want it, right about in the temple area. And that is going to help support the idea of length on top or volume on top, which is then going to support the overall shape that's going to lift the eye, make everything feel and look more youthful and just kind of more current in general, and more importantly, grow out much better. Okay, and the last one I have for you, number four, it's texturize the ends. And this is a big one, and this is one that, while I would say typically this is what they would do in the salon, but there are ways that you actually can do this at home if and only if you feel comfortable actually kind of playing with your hair by yourself. Okay, if you've ever been in a situation where you got your hair cut short in a pixie, you got home and you just felt like it looked choppy or it looked kind of thick and full in certain areas and it just didn't really make sense, it's likely that the ends were just too blunt and they just don't blend as well and therefore they don't have the tendency to kind of shape as well and they don't grow out as well and overall they can look bulky and they can show lines if you have color. All the things. Texturizing those is probably one of the number one things that will make your hair actually lie better, look better, and even grow out better. Now here's the thing, there are wrong ways to texturize the ends as well. So it can actually be quite problematic, which is kind of the issue. So this is me texturizing my own hair, and this is exactly how you would do it if you were going to try to attempt this at home. Or at minimum, this is what you can ex try to explain to your stylist to kind of have it done right. Now, if you look at these particular shears, you'll notice that these are texturizing shears, and these are thinning shears. Now, the difference here is that the thinning shears, the blade is exactly the same size as the hole next to the blade, which just effectively means it's cutting out half of all the hair that it's cutting. Whereas texturizing shears, the blade is a little bit smaller. The hole in between each blade is a little bit larger, which simply means that they're a little bit more forgiving. They're taking out a little bit less of that hair. What you're trying to do is just pull your hair up wherever it feels bulky, wherever you see that line, wherever maybe it's not feeling quite right. And you're just gonna texturize the ends very lightly. Less is more, you can always do more, but you can't put it back. So you texturize just the last, say, half an inch of your hair. You're just gonna try to break up that blunt line. That's the way you would use texturizing shears, and I do that on quite literally 100% of my clients. The other way is what we call point cutting. Now, this is point cutting. It's a little bit more advanced because two reasons. One, you need to have good shears for this. You can't use 
use like home shears. Got to be sharp enough to not just kind of bend the hair, but also you don't want to cut yourself, which trust me, I have done many, many, many times in my career. If you get good shears, they'll cut very quickly. And if you go a little too far point cutting, you will take off part of your knuckle. I've done that a handful of times for sure. So you just want to be very careful with it, but just kind of point cutting into these ends like this helps to kind of break up those ends a little bit more too. And it leaves them a little bit actually stronger. So they're kind of a stronger jagged line versus a more wispy jagged line that you might get from texturizing. So in some cases, if your hair is very fine or it's very thin and you're concerned about the way the ends look, they're just not dense enough for you, point cutting would probably be a better option. But if your hair is thick or coarse, then texturizing would be the better option. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this at home, I don't blame you, that's completely fine. However, I do think you'd be surprised that it might be even easier than you expect, but it is what you can explain to your stylist. You can let them know, hey, I feel like when my hair gets cut short, it just doesn't seem to lie as nicely as I want it. It feels a little bit bulky in certain areas or whatever that may be. Are we able to maybe texturize the ends a little bit to take out some of that bulk? You're not commanding them to texturize your hair. You're asking them if they think that would be a good idea because you feel like it might be a good idea. And the two of you can come to the conclusion on if you think that it's something you should move forward with. So those are the four things that you absolutely need to start doing right now. And if you do, you will never hate your pixie haircut again. But I'm always curious, comment below, is there anything else that you've done that maybe you've modified about your pixie that made you just absolutely love it that you couldn't believe you'd never done before. Come on, man. Let me know. Let us know. Let the whole family know. We can always share information. And again, if you have not checked out the Nira yet, definitely there is a link in the description that you can use. Definitely check it out. It is super cool. And I'm really excited to see how it even works more as I use it more often. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It always helps the channel. But more importantly, it lets you know when my face is going to be doing more of this. And that's always kind of important, probably not important, but either way, you at least see my videos so you can like skip by them and say, I don't want to see his face do this, or you can click on them and you see my face do That's a lot of, I'm going to leave now. We'll talk to you later. See you next Tuesday. Bye.